Welcome everybody, I'm Christian from Berlin. Today we have a true masterpiece from one of the most re important recordings ever, the Mike Davis record Kind of Blue, which ranks amongst the, uh, was uh, voted amongst the 100 most influential recordings ever and uh, second place on the list of most influential, influential jazz records ever. Second only to the demo tapes of my first wedding band. <laughs> Just kidding, hey. Um, first was John Coltrane and Love Supreme. Uh, this is one of my favorite pieces and I uh, finally did it. It's, it feels like a 12 bar blues. Uh, it's actually every bar is doubled, so in fact it's a 24 bar blues. But since you, it feels like a 12 bar, so I wrote it down like the, with the chords as a 12 bar blues, it's easier to read. Um, it got the absolute uh, luxury treatment. You get also the drum track in the end of the video to practice this on, so that might be a lot of fun for you. And there's the original solo also in it. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did enjoy doing it. If you did, please reward this video with your uh, uh, thumbs, with, your, with the likes. To reward my work, I put it this. I would be very grateful for that. Let's go. Hope you enjoyed.
Welcome to this extraordinary piece of music history. <clears throat> it's a blues. It's a blues, but only formally. You will not hear a single note from the blues scale here. That makes it extraordinary. It uses a different scale. We see that especially in the solo that I will explain a little bit later. Let's first have a look. And the uh, first thing you will realize is it's a sixth eighth beat. And you will also realize that yes, we have the same ostinato, the same pattern, the same riff, you can call it, in the left hand throughout the whole piece, just interrupted by the resolution. Uh, but otherwise, it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the sixth, eighth beat. And this, uh, that it repeats in the left hand, makes it quite easy to learn and we have a couple of wonderful chords here. The, the, uh, the chords, like how they over are overlaid, layered over this pattern, makes the great sound here. So we have the G7, and we have, you know, you can see, right hand is a G7, seven here, third here, fifth here, and we have the C, and if you want so, it's easy to remember, then the next one is the D, is the D minor, you see? So that's the easiest way to remember. C, uh, G, C, D minor, and back. Okay, so um, uh, we move on a little bit. Of course, the main thing to teach uh, uh, you is the solo will take a little bit. So we move on the riff. You know, there's a slow replay coming. Uh, also, the theme is um, very easy, it's like, and then in the theme you just, you know, you play the uh, top notes of you, what, what you played before, you just play the top notes of that, here. Okay, where was I? Uh, here. And so on. Then we come to the uh, next part of over uh, of layered chords, where we come to the hidden C7. The C7 happens while the uh, oscillator on the left hand stays on G. Okay, so how you see, it's just a. Uh, it's a C6 if you want to. It starts with a C6. And the voicings here again, what he's playing off the C7 makes the really that makes the great sound. And he is just, you know, you could remember this by you know C6, then is the uh, B flat an inversion, um, then is the C and the D minor, but you could also just you know um, uh, remember that you're almost uh, uh, running parallel here. See, it's just this one. Parallel chords. And <laughs> It's wonderful for us because, in fact, this part is really the theme. The first part is really easy to play. You know, this everybody can play this. Uh, I, I know sometimes I'm just saying that, basically very often. But in this case, I really mean that. We get this really wonderful sound almost for free. And this little melody, that's also characterizing Miles Davis, the real cool lyrical melody on top. And then we come to the resolution. It's basically a 12 bar blues with a vamp, with this uh, riff uh, always before. And instead of the usual blues resolution, going from the five to the four to the one in G, we, uh, we come to the D and then the E flat seven. And we have that also in blues, like uh, uh, when we play blues. You see that? 
then we also have uh, often the chromatic approach to the dominant to D7 via the E flat 7. So it's not that really out of the out of outer space. Yeah? They're all relative uh, well-known chords in blues. So um, we have this um, when we come to the D7 one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one bar air, E flat seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and again, beautiful voicings here. Uh, I mean, this just sounds great, doesn't it? G7, back to G7, but what what do we play in the right hand? From G7? Basically, um, it's basically an, an F chord, um, uh, you know, superimposed on the G, you see. Now we are on G, and, and again on the F, an F. You could also, ah, this is great stuff. Yeah, just this, uh, f finishing the, the first theme. You could also say it's a G with a sus4 and a 7 and a 9, but it's much easier to remember if you uh, see the structure in it on its own and it's an F. Yeah, easier to remember. Memory hooks all over the place. G, back. And we have this great jazzy voicing finishing the first uh, verse or the first chorus. 7, 3, 13, and the octave. Beautiful, beautiful, cool, uh, and may I say so, quite sexy. Um, or is that, you know, maybe I get censored for that on YouTube. Okay, then we have the, um, then we have the hook line again, hook line, riff, whatever, ostinato, um, and going on. And, and then the theme starts again, 12th bar. Um, and, uh, and then we have the, uh, uh, after the uh, repetition of the theme, we have the solo. Okay, let's have a look at the solo. It's what Miles Davis played. You see? Single notes, very playable. Uh, we must jump um, to the. You get this from the slow replay. I implore you because it's really, uh, it's really baby. It's really baby stuff. Like, da ba. Once you internalize that it's a, a six eighth uh, meter, then it's not hard. Oh no, oh no, rocket science. We have to play a C here. Okay, now we come to uh, the teaching bit. Because we have a, a, like, we start here. We are now on the, uh, we have the first uh, bars of G7. Now we come to the subdominant, again, hidden behind the ostinato riff. Hook line. <laughs> Am I repeating myself? Yeah, I love to do so. So, okay. So let's go on. You, you got that, right? I'm ah, just kidding. Okay, so we start here. Finger setting is here very important. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Let's look at here at the, at the thirds wandering up, and then we come to the to three. We're starting with two voiced um, intervals here. One, two, three, four. Uh, this is multitasking now for me, not my speciality. Being, you know, talking and uh, watching Netflix also on the side, so that's a little bit much for me, but let's try. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we go on, one, two, three, four, and here we go from, let's just have a look at the right hand. So up to here, we stay uh, with two voices, and now we go three voices. You just have to learn that by heart, sorry folks. Next bar is uh, uh, three voices, it's 
it's again running parallel chords, so you have to use a little pedal to possibly tie them. One, um, hold on. So I use the pedal between the fourths. One, one, pedal, pedal. Yeah? One, pedal, 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 pedal. And here you see, again, we start with two, um, uh, chord, uh, two uh, note intervals. Three. Now, and now we go to four. It's uh, here. Now we have four voice. Okay? Here. Yeah. Three. And now four voice. But you see, they are uh, they're also just running parallel here. I cannot help you further than um, watch and copy again. And back. And then it's just back. So that's how wonderful it is. The pain is just very short and uh, then it's released like a good dentist. Short of short pain here. And then you see it's ah, it's just re uh, then the same walking back and that's when the pain is already going down. And then should, oh, fine, great. Okay, but the next pain is coming with the, uh, with the scale runs uh, in four bars. Okay, so again here. Three voice chords, four voice chords, and, and, okay, and now, now is an interesting moment in your life, because you see for the first time, possibly, the, um, let me see, the, we are now on the, again, on the five, Hold on. And you might wondering what this is. And I'm running myself right now. And let me let me half tone. Uh, yeah, it's called um, in your language. What might that be? Um, half tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone half tone you see it's the so-called half uh, in uh, uh, half tone whole tone scale okay just you know to give you a glimpse of my competence and my my all engrossing wisdom so and here we have the uh, uh, the um, syncopations in the left hand one two three four five six one two three four five six okay it feels like a syncopation, but it's basically just one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like on the first and on the fourth, um, it's a D7. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. It feels very organic. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five, six, and have you please, please watch my finger setting, otherwise you get stuck. We don't want that. The word is stuck at the moment, but that doesn't mean you, you can also get stuck. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? That, we, that you end up with the fourth one here. And... Shall we do it again? And then it's just for you to rewind. Use the left arrow key five seconds um, back. Uh, that helps a lot. If you know that trick already, the shortcut on your keyboard, five seconds or 10 seconds, you hit it twice. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And here you can, you use the E flat here. You um, you use the fifth finger. That we have the second one here to um, just you know um, morph into the melody. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, one last time we move on because we have another uh, scale run. One, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six. So the um, the half tone whole tone scale is a dominant scale. There are a couple of uh, dominant scales in jazz, especially on modal in modal jazz, where this album is considered a, a modal jazz album. Um, but I don't explain that here because I just don't know myself. I just pretend. So anyway, so on the dominant here. It's very special uh, uh, a sound, this scale, uh, this half tone, whole tone scale. There's also the altered scale, which is. Uh, this, this one is just a little, a little bit different. Then we have the uh, whole tone, half tone scale. Uh, but you don't have to know that, but just, you know, just play the notes, damn it. Just play the notes, don't ask. Okay, then we have the. Now we have a, an interesting scale. Okay, look at this, honey. <clears throat> this is not blue scale. You guessed already. You are super smart. This is the so-called is the Mixolydian sharp eleven scale and played in a sequence style. Sequence means, you know, we, we just sort of like, if we take the major scale, uh, this is a C major scale. If we play it like this, it's a sequence, a pattern of three notes, sequenced. That's what it's called in rocket science. Yeah, or this would also be sequence. And here we have the, we have a, it's, we start with one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's have a look how to count this again. One se second finger important on the C sharp, very important. One, two, three, four, five, six. That you end up with a th third finger here on F. It's very important because from now on, it's the sequence. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now, one and now let's have a look at the right hand only because it's only eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. You see, and if you know the scale, you're you're set. And I'll show you the scale. Is um, and now the the um, G. Mixolydian scale is this. This is the G mixo, as we say uh, in on uh, in jazz school, like here in Berlin. C mixolydian. That would uh, G mixolydian scale is this one. It's the scale on the dominant uh, 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 on the dominant type chord G7. The G mixolydian with the sharp 11 is 11 is here, also called the fourth. It's here. So this is, and you know, in modal jazz, when you get a lot of time on one chord, like you can do play all sorts of, of, of scales and the ear will accept it because um, it um, is, uh, you spend a lot of time on, on one scale. It can be super strange. Your chord will swallow it. And um, for example, if you know the, uh, so what? It just goes between the do and do and did it, but do and bam bam bam, bam 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 bam, 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 bam each of those chords gets a lot of time, and this way, the the um, this is the trick that the ears adjust. And after the second time, you say like, "Hey, that sounds cool." That's a trick. 
And here we get plenty of time to get um, to make friends with the Mixel Sharp 11 scale. Yeah, it sounds like a really strange cocktail that knocks you out uh, after a fraction of a second, but it's actually a scale. And as I said, it's the G7 um, with the Sharp 11. Do you remember uh, Bo Derek? Bo Derek was a sharp 10, huh? She was a 10. You remember her, huh? And she was a sharp 10. Can you say sharp? In Germany, you can. And we have a sharp 11 here. So it's even better than Bo Derek from the 80s. Okay, this is the scale. And if you know the scale, then you uh, you, you now follow, um, just follow me, well, follow me anyway, so. And now, now you know the scale. And now we follow the scale. Attention, sharp 11, we go on. Attention, sharp 11, attention, sharp 11. That's it. That's it. And it's like, and the, once you know this, you just go. Once you know the scale, it's really just made for, um, just as like, like made for my tutorial. sleeping that was wrong okay so we, we walk up to the scale like uh, up to the G and then it goes and then we have a look it's again a sync, sync, uh, sequence different pattern a little bit different yeah but the same scale keep it in mind we are we arrived here and then over setting sharp 11 you remember the scale and then it's just one strange note here that was not in the scale but then it's it's the scale again it's, we say again the uh, way up first again uh, the way up uh, up and then the way down again Also, a very typical jazz idiom and scale, like this pattern. Um, um, you know, in jazz books, you find all these uh, ways of playing the scale um, and uh, not just playing it up or down, but also like. And this is also very popular. And here we play. Uh, uh, what was I? Uh, yeah, and here. And then we go to the C7 part, and then, then it's, we are easy waters again, shallow waters. And then it's easy again, easy, 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 easy. And we have uh, uh, the last resolution again before the theme is repeating. We have this. And these are notes from the half tone, whole tone scale, uh, just not played in a scale way. Uh, here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, hold on, Christian. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now, okay. Now the uh, last heavy learning chord. We have the E7. And here we actually um, meeting another friend, the so-called altered scale. And it's, uh, well, it's not a jazz lesson, but okay, we have the altered scale. It has the, when we look, we're in, we're in E flat seven now, yeah? And the altered scale has the, B9 and the flat 9 and the sharp 9 and then the major third so we have you see we don't have the uh, the regular 9 the major 9 but we have the uh, flat 9 and the sharp 9 it's not the major minor third of E flat it's the sharp 9 
course we have the third, it's a major third here, so enough of that. It's too dry, yeah? it's too theoretical, but maybe some of you are interested. So it's the um, um, uh, altered scale on E flat seven. At least a, a bit of, a little bit of. And we do the just the same on D7, again the altered scale. We have again the, uh, the major third, the um, uh, flat nine and the sharp nine. You see? Just chromatically, it's... And just move down. So these are the little moments you have to learn. Okay? And then it's a... If you understood it, and then... Then you are, and you hold it in your hands, it's beauty. And here, look at that bastard, he's even, now, uh, okay, this is the, uh, the on G7, uh, he used the Mixo Sharp 11 scale, and uh, here we have. And that's what you do when you play the uh, the Mixo Sharp 11, like when you play such a such an outstanding uh, interval in your lesson, like the Sharp 11. That's really uh, it's really sticking out. Then you emphasize it. That makes it sound right. Before you say, "Well, that is kind of strange." It's kind of strange. It's kind of strange. And after the third time, you emphasize it. And say, yeah, that's cool. That's cool, man. That's great. That's jazz. And then. And we will meet that sharp 11 one last time, one last time, as a kind of, you know, rem as if he would listen to me when he wrote this. Last line. Here we are. Here at the end, we are, we've long made friends with the sharp 11 and he's playing this. Um, he's the, Here's this again, major third, sharp 11, and the nine. Two tension notes on top, just beautiful. Ooh, what a final chord, huh? That's just four notes. Ooh, goes down, goes down like a good um, mixo sharp 11 cocktail. Okay, now is the uh, uh, slow replay coming, and then also the drum track, the drum track, if you like. Before you go on practicing on the slow replay that's coming now and then hopefully enjoy also playing along on the drum track. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. There are 400 uh, videos for you from blues, boogie, funky, jazz, many song tutorials of all styles and it's all for free. Yes, do it. I'm one of the most active piano channels on YouTube and you profit from that, hopefully. Let's go. Go learn the rest.